inside of his pocket. Oh, come on, yo. Damn. Yo, I saw, oh man, that was so cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? We're back with another reaction, and we are wrapping up the trilogy that is Money Game Trilogy by Ren. Thank you, Renegades, for suggesting such an amazing trilogy thus far. We're gonna see how he wraps it up. I believe this is the last video, and uh, I'm excited to see how he wraps up the money games. Yes, money game part one, which was a one take, acoustic style, uh, known, he's really branding that style of music for him in video, uh, live performance, which gave the, the grand scheme of things, the concepts that, that fuel throughout the times of history, this money game he spoke of. Part two went deep into the details that create this money game. So we have the concepts, now here are the details, and he actually gave us a step-by-step -step process on how to obtain and win in this money game, and also the negative things that result well, from it. I wouldn't necessarily say win, but how to play the money game. Okay, well how to play. Yeah. True. And then here's part three, again. Like, I don't know, like, is he gonna keep the same thematical elements? Is he going to keep the same even song? Some of the song elements like uh, like the hook, the rain, 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 right? Things like that. Is he gonna reference something from another Ren song? Is he gonna change it, completely change it up? I wouldn't be surprised. He's, he's kind of already, he's no strangers to surprising us, so. Oh, let's get to it, because this one is nine minutes long. <laughs> okay, let's get to it. <laughs> Damn. I'm not surprised at this point. Looks like he got a bag on his head. Ooh, I like this bird's eye view. It's, it's fun to watch. The classical music style sounds very... Oh, that might not be him. Probably not. It's probably one of his boys from his band. Ooh. Hey, if you know who's got the bag on their head, comment down below. I like this Dutch angle he's going in and out of. Ooh. Whoa. Samuel and Ren. Jenny is preached. Samuel. Bag over the head, loose. Oh, I think this might be a, it feels like it's gonna be alive. Is it gonna be live? I don't know, man, we'll find this out. This is quite a few edits in this video so yeah, far. So far, a little different than his one take just on screen. Or a fusion of the two. Ooh. Oh, he keeps saying, look in the mirror, in the, in the hook, money game. We all gotta look in the mirror to see the player of the money game. Talking about ourselves. There you go. you a story about a boy named Jimmy. One years old and his first words were mine, mine, gimme. Two years old he was walking, three years old walking quickly. Four years old he was running round the pavements of his city. Five years old and his daddy told him, listen here son, you gotta learn to be a man. A man he works for what he wants. Six years old and he's reading writing, top of the bunch. And when he's seven, his progression made him student number one. Eight years old and he's praised for unusual grades. Nine, his parents paid for private school to nurture the flame. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, he ascends and ascends. His daddy tells him, son, money is the means to all ends. Fourteen, solving complex mathematic equations. At fifteen, IQ 150, still 
elevating 16 he develops complex software code that detects weaknesses in cyber security protocols 17 and he sells his vision keeping the share not yet an adult but he's practically a millionaire 18 and his daddy tells him now you're a man this world don't give a damn about you so take all that you can 19 Whoa. Whoa. This I, is a whole different take, man. I like this. This is like... This is so far. This has got to be my favorite one so, so far. And it's only like... Uh, three, not that, three minutes in, man. That didn't feel like three minutes. It felt like a long time, right? It's because he... Oh, well, he... He 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 went through... He quick... Let's talk about it. He quickly went through the time span of a child's progression from birth to age 18 and kind of displaying or foreshadowing where this child's life is gonna go, or the concepts that are being drilled into him about money, and from age, from birth to 18, kind of displaying pivotal moments in his lifetime that are, uh, those moments are going to create the concept of how he views money. <coughs> the concept of how he views money or uh, what he thinks about money, so. So when the kid was born, his name was Jimmy. The first words was gimme, gimme, mine already saying that he's in that mind state of of just wanting more or just uh like a capitalistic or some I, type of like I, I don't agree with that i don't think they, they, they they're saying that he's in that mindset i think what's happening is you know as children we're naturally we need things and we just tell our parents give me give me right but then it's the parents who are going to start to feel this uh want to always need Ooh. things. Okay. So that's what's happening because okay. he, he's a child. He can't, okay. he doesn't well, know what's happening. I still disagree with you. I think that he's saying because this whole thing's called money game, and this is about this child's journey into the money game, because he's so young, I think he's just saying this kid was was from the get. This was in his head since the beginning, since his he said his first words were gimme, gimme mine. Right, so so nature, so, nature so, versus nurture. What do you guys think? Do you think that's that, what I think. Do you think, comment below, do you think that Jimmy was just a kid being a kid, as kids often do, gimme, gimme, and then his or parents are oh, sorry. his parents are fueling that I'll in him, in. and that's what creates his uh want and obsession for money in the future? Or do you think this Or kid do you think that because you said your thing, I'm gonna say mine. Or do you think that Ren's artistic mind is letting is telling you that since this kid was born, he was this kind of person, or he was meant to be this kind of person? Because at such an early age, his first words ever were "Gimme, give gimme, give mine." Yeah, don't it wasn't let, mom. It wasn't dad. It was "Gimme, gimme, yeah. mine." Don't 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 let him uh, convince you by playing on your like for Ren by saying Ren's artistic mind before he displayed his points. And don't let him right? convince you I'm by, not by, you, by saying, do you think it's just because it's a natural thing that kids do? They no, see, see, I, I, made a, I made a broad statement. You brought Ren into uh, it right. and tried to like we'll, we'll let them. We'll let people in the comments yeah. tell us what they think. Right. Tell us what right? you think. Whoa, whoa, even before you get to that, all right? Yeah. Okay, you know, he talked about all these things when he was, when he was a, a, a kid, he was, he was born to be exceptional. He 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 did good in he did really good in school. He said above average grades for what he was doing, right? And then when I think he was like 10, his dad told him, you know, son, life is about uh uh making a big making a lot of money. Money is a means to an end, blah 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 blah. And in his head, he developed these skills to be like a computer hacker and 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 do all this crazy stuff. And then he said that he used those skills to acquire a lot of money. By the time he was uh, 18, he said he was practically already a millionaire. Yeah, yeah, he used those skills, I believe, to create some sort of cybersecurity type business he had mentioned. And just to further prove my point, if you keep listening from age, from birth to 18, he doesn't really continue to describe the kid as a money hungry or play on any of those tropes that he has, but only really emphasizes how the parents, his dad specifically, is uh, pushing him towards that direction we can watch it one more time, you'll see. Well, when you're practically a millionaire, by the time you're 18 years old, you probably would exhibit some type of want or need to become somebody who's money hungry and coming into this money game. I know I wasn't close to a millionaire when I was 18 years old, just saying. Just yes, saying. but the, the argument is, are his parents pushing him that towards that direction? Or 
is he just naturally like that? Well, it'll be a little bit of both. Who knows? Yeah, I think it's mainly the parents because, as we all know, we are shaped by our parents and our. Well, we don't all know that, but that's that's what this whole thing's about, right? But I believe that we're shaped by our parents and what they tell us. And he's constantly bringing up the dad. And before we continue the song, uh, just the reason why so much happened in like three minutes also is as, as far as a song goes, he did that Ren thing, you know? Started off with an epic introduction, a lot of musicality, instrumentation, uh, with some slight acting, symbolism going on. You got the guy playing it with the bag over his face and the guy who stops him with the bag over his face. Very cinematic. Very cinematic. And then, you know, takes off his mask and looks right in the mirror because as he stated over and over again throughout the hook of all this money game stuff, he's like, take a look in the mirror because that's the player of this money game and he's talking about us. You know, I don't think this is actually a live one take. Well, not, it's definitely not a one take, but... Um, I don't think it's... Maybe... I don't think it's live. It could be live, but I don't I don't think it's live. I think, oh. um, I think it's more music video style, but that doesn't take away from how epic it is. And uh, I just like how he's actually telling you the story and then uh, creating visuals in the video to tell that story. I like, I'm a fan of this style of art or expression. So let's keep watching. A million at 18 and this daddy tells him now you're a man. This world don't give a damn about you, so take all that you can. 19, he turns a profit, stocks and shares, invest in product. 20, double down deposits. 21, his income rockets. 22, he learns the truth is just an obstacle to wealth. If you manipulate the data, then the lie will sell itself. 23, a life of luxury, crystal and cocaine. 24, he makes the Forbes list, they're applauding his name. 25, and his daddy tells him. Listen here, son. While you're sitting in that palace, that don't mean that you won. Twenty six of business. Mm. So he's going through his early twenties, saying that he's making even more money. Uh, he's saying that he reinvest, and at some point he gets on the on the Forbes list, right? So now when you're on the Forbes list, you're you're making bank. You know, only the richest people in the world make that list straight up. That's actually a list for the richest people in the world. Yeah. You know. You know, you got El Chapo was on that list and he was a drug dealer. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're making that money, they're going to put you on that list. Um, yeah. So uh, as Julian had mentioned, um, as Jules had mentioned, he's just continuing from him becoming a millionaire and, you know, the aftermath of him becoming a millionaire, how he made how he continues to make his fortune, how he continues to grow and expand his fortune. He mentioned stocks, investments. He mentions uh, making the Forbes list. Not only does the Forbes list mean that you have a lot of money, but it also brings you a lot of fame because now you're exposed to the whole world as being this richest person in the world. And then that's a nice little introduction into uh, what happens when a young person gets too much money at a young age starts dabbling in cocaine, dabbling in partying, things like that. And then of course, the common theme or thread that he continuously brings back, his father coming in to tell him that, uh, hey man, you made it to the palace, but guess what? That's not enough. So I'm, just, I'm going to predict that this is going to propel him even more as his father has continuously propelled him since he was younger to engage in this money game and he seems to be the proponent that continuously boosts his ideology with money or at least uh, at least inspires him to gain more money because as we know, uh, male figures in your life or fathers can be the most influential figure in your life if they're there, if they are there. It reminds me of that movie that came out with Zac Efron, the wrestling one, mm. Iron Claw. Watch it, it's an amazing movie. Mm -hmm. Depressing, but amazing. Yeah. Kind of similar in the way that, you know, boys, the boys can never please their father. He always wants more, never encouraging. Just saying, you know, it's not good enough uh, mentality. I also like how he said that he discovered at an early age, I think it was age 21, mm -hmm. that, the, oh. that the truth was an obstacle in this money game. And if you and manipulate that, the facts, then the lie will Sell itself. itself. Twin sense. So that the lie will sell itself. Mm. And that's a that's a very poetic way. You know what I mean? To to just basically say that people sell you lies, you know what I mean? Like 
you know, if you or how the lie is created, you know, how people create the lies. He's going into detail. You manipulate numbers, manipulate data, becomes a lie, sells itself. People manipulate data all the time. But um, so yeah, I yeah. I, I want to see what's gonna happen from twenty five and above, and to thirty. Maybe even if he makes it to thirty, because you know, knowing Ren, this could lead to death. Who knows? <gasps> we'll see. We'll see. It's good. I learned. Shift. He switches business to arms, he's 27, you won. 26, a business shift. He switches business to arms, he's 27, dealing nuclear and shells in Iran. 28, inside the Senate, money bought him a seat. He's 29, a role of counsel in the president's suite. Now he's 30, his daddy says you're losing the race. You're just a servant to the king, not even in second place. 31, a big maneuver for his daddy's approval. Moving imports over borders from the exports out of Cuba. 32 moving grams, growing kilos to tons He's 33 filling warehouses with powder and guns 34 turf war with nobody to stop it Blind eye from the popo inside of his pocket Oh, come on, yo Dang. Yo, I s oh man, that was so cool Okay yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I like this because You know, he goes on to talk about how this Jimmy continuously gets into new ventures just to seek for that next thrill, that next fortune, keep making money, keep making money. And although at this point, I'm pretty sure that, um, I, I'm pretty sure that Jimmy has more than he can ever need. He's still constantly looking to fulfill that hunger of how much money can I make? How much can I do it? Of course, he brings dad back into it. Dad is telling him, hey, man, you got to make more. You got to make more. And eventually, uh, he paints a picture of him going from legal to semi-legal manipulation to completely illegal activities. Because, I mean, if you're trying to, like, make big, big banger bucks, then, you know, Escobar, Chapo... All the biggest drug so, dealers have showed us you can do that. So I'm going to bring three names up in here, which come into mind when I think of what's going on in this stage in Jimmy's life right now, right? I'm going to say Tony Stark, right? Uh, Tommy Shelby. Tommy Shelby. Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders. And and Joaquin Lero Guzman, a.k.a. El Chapo, okay? This is like a combination of the three, what's going on with him. Because, you know, he went from, he said, selling normal products to selling arms. Now he's selling all this stuff. And that can get a little iffy, depending, because, you know, there's a lot of under-the-table stuff. You know, who are you selling to? Sometimes you're selling to both sides. That, that war is good. War makes you a lot of money, right? Then he says, he, 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 say, he say money bought him a seat in Congress, right? And when I think about it, that reminds me of Thomas Shelby. Because Thomas Shelby rose through the powers from a street kid all the way to a high power in Congress. And the thing that got him there, other than his highly illegal actions, was money. It helped aided him yeah. into that point, right? And then I bring up the El Chapo because, you know, because he's seeking daddy's approval, uh, not even arms will make him this much money. What's gonna do it? It's gonna be drugs. He says he had warehouses full of powder and all these things and all this crazy stuff. And then he wraps it up by saying that you know, nobody's even messing with him in turf wars, right? Because if y'all don't know, if you're a drug dealer, you're gonna have enemies. You're gonna have enemies, it's gonna be fighting over turf, over sections, over who's selling to who, and in what areas you wanna sell it in. And this creates wars. Areas. What areas you wanna send it in? What areas you wanna send it in. And this creates turf wars. Turf. Wars between different cartels or different, different drug organizations. And he's like, nobody's even messing with Jimmy in these turf wars. Why? Because he has the police in his pocket, right? That's the sound of the police! Which is a nice little bar there, because by having the police in your pocket, when you reach into your pocket, what do you pull out? You pull out your wallet, which has money. And he's saying, I got the police in my pocket. Not even the police can mess with me because I'm paying them off. Blind eye from the popo inside of his pocket. Here comes that acting stuff we was talking about. Is he gonna just like do like an acting sequence? 35, he gets the call. I'm sorry, son, but it's your father. Had a heart attack, I'm sorry, he's gone. 
36 getting pissed off, abusing his product 37, eyes glazed, disposition demonic 38, with a prostitute, a moment of passion Heating up a silver spoon and then chasing the dragon 39, getting reckless and hungry for power Daddy's words are still driving him to kill and devour Makes a move against the cartel, but the strategy's flawed They retaliate and leave him in a hospital ward A bullet buried in his vertebra and one in his leg The doctor sighs and says, I don't think you'll be walking again Fuck Oh, oh. Yeah. Let's wrap this up real quick because this video is this video is getting really long. Okay. Um all right, so <laughs> so basically Jimmy's dad dies, get the phone call, his dad died, and his it seemed like his dad was <sighs> in a sense probably uh keeping him on point because his dad was uh you know, calling him all the time. I'm assuming his dad was the one that would help him, give him advice on how to continuously get this fortune or whatever. Maybe tell him the right and wrong moves to obtain the fortune, even if he was doing the wrong thing. And then he gets a call from his, from somebody that his dad died. And it seems like his dad was a big figure in his life. So this is just like driving him on a downward spiral. And now you take a man who's got all this influence, power, and money, and you, give him something that is putting him on a depressive downward spiral then they start to talk about what happens as that happens do you want to talk about what's happening to jimmy yeah but i just want to say i don't believe that this is happening because his dad was a prominent figure in his life or or i don't believe his dad was a positive influence in his life i didn't say right? positive i said prominent well i don't i think i think what why he's going down the downward spiral is because the the dopamine he received was that approval from his dad. Now that approval is gone, it's like he has nothing to work for. He has nothing to to look forward to. Like that's the, like that's like the same exact thing, except I, you just you I just, didn't interpret it you as you that. Just, well, it's 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 his dad. His dad is the cause of all this. His dad is the cause of the downward spiral. The words from his dad that are connected to the living vessel. It's his dad, bro. Stop, okay. stop trying to be so. No, no, that's just what I think. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. We don't always we don't always agree. Who do you agree with? Do you agree with me, right? <laughs> in the green, or do you agree with him because he's completely wrong? So now that it, now that he has nothing to work for, because his dad is gone, he starts he starts slipping up. Jimmy starts slipping up. He starts doing all these self-destructive things. He's sleeping with prostitutes, sandblasting prostitutes. <laughs> sandblasting prostitutes. What's this guy gonna do? What's this guy gonna do to mess this up this time? <laughs> sandblasting. <laughs> Shut up. I'm sorry. Good. All right. Sandblasting. <laughs> So he starts sleeping with prostitutes. I think he said he's doing heroin. All I heard was like silver, silver spoon. Maybe that's. He like, said he said he said something about he got he had a silver spoon that turned into a dragon. Turned into a dragon. I don't know if a dragon is another way of saying heroin. No, nah, no. Nah, I think he's talking. He's saying he had he was once a kid with the silver spoon. Okay. And then he turned into this dragon. I, I just you know, I, I just thought like spoon. You know, nah, heroin. Nah, nah. This Whatever. Is, this but ferocious he, he, dragon creature. But it could be because it said that he was he was now abusing his own product, which was making him product, slip. Product. Uh, yo, that that well, yeah. Of course, that would definitely you know. That's big one of the biggest rules, so, man. If he's you not thinking, get high, the you know, supply. supply. You know what I mean? So he's not thinking clearly, and when he's not thinking clearly, he's making mistakes. And one of the mistakes he makes is he starts, I guess, he makes the wrong move against the his one of his enemies, or Remember? maybe someone within his whatever. He makes the wrong move against the wrong person, and then he, you know, he starts messing up in the cartel war. And somewhere along this line, he gets shot, and now he's in the hospital, and they're saying. You know, we don't think you're going to be able to walk again. Now this is where we're at. He's a this paraplegic. He's, what is that? He's like 40, I think. And now he'll never walk again. So let's see what happens. The doctor sighs and says, I don't think you'll be walking again. Fuck. Oh, now he's in the wheelchair getting pushed. That would be crazy if he ends up being the full circle in the wheelchair of the first money game. Remember the first money game when he was in a wheelchair? Mm. Or somebody was in the wheelchair? We'll see what happens. Maybe he'll lose his fortune and become a bum or something in the wheelchair. Sure. Oh, they Ooh. got an orchestra. 
Apple strings. Oh, so this is live, man. This has to be live. Yeah, like they're playing instruments. Let me tell you a story about a boy named Jimmy. He was 40, and he cursed the words, mine, mine, gimme. 41, he wasn't walking. 42, not walking quickly. 43, never running round the pavements of his city. 44, inside a palace with a mountain of gold. But those riches turn to rubble when perspective evolves. Weighing heavy on his conscience is the value of gold. Lamborghini for a life, trading money for souls. Jimmy followed the code inside the land of the free. Put your hand inside the cookie jar, take more than you need. And his example is exaggerated versions of me. And it's a version of him. And it's a version of she. And it's a version of you. There's no escaping the blame. The way we live is parasitic. Fuck the money and fame. Call the music. <laughs> yeah. What an emotional transition. The way those strings just come in so beautifully, building up this, uh, I believe I believe it's an arpeggio, I'm not sure. I may just be talking shit right now, but it sounds like it's correct, Bruh. right? And it's just building up that emotional buildup of like, okay, maybe that's a shift in perspective now in Jimmy, you know? I love how he talks about he has a mountain of gold and all this stuff starts to change when his perspective changes. Um, I believe he's maybe referring to the fact that what's the point of having all this fortune if you're alone, you can't walk. Basically, you can't really live your life. Like you have a whole fortune, but you can't live a happy life. And uh, you know, you could have, that's when your perspective might start to change. Um, and then he just told the orchestra to cut the music in the middle of him performing which I love, it's just so like. It's very meta, 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 meta. It's like when you're like making things aware, you're stepping outside of the actual song. I think, I believe that's also breaking the third wall. On oh, some Deadpool shit. Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? Right, breaking the third wall, he's kind of just, that's what I like about this guy, man. He does he, that a lot. He's got no rules to his creativity. It can go anywhere, anything can happen and it always keeps you on your toes wondering what's gonna happen and it makes it a more exciting, pleasurable experience. So let's, let's keep listening. This is, this is getting interesting. Hey, we live is parasitic. Fuck the money and fame. Call the music. This isn't entertainment. This is real life. The way we live is lunacy. Community, it declines. Hyperpolarized, always fighting, then we divide. Truth is less important than the money that we designed. Money's an invention. Politics from our invention. They all come from people's ideas. Did I mention? Borders an invention. Law and order fuel the tension. It leads to people killing each other. My solution? Hmm. I don't know what, I don't like that gun on the table. Everything is subject to change. We could build utopias if individuals were taught to use their brains. But if we teach kids in schools to always be sheep and put themselves before the herd, if there's more money for me, then there's no future I see where the humans survive with parasites inside a petri dish with cannibal minds. Mold will grow upon the surface and consumes till it dies. And our fate could be the same without this story to the wise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he, he brought up a lot of interesting points there, man. Um, man, he uh, he kind of just like summarized what's <clears throat> going on in the world, I believe, in that quick little phrase. In this in this little in this quick statement he made, um, polarizing things or polarizing topics using polarizing words to divide people leaving the masses 
in a state of confusion, being able to control them. Not teaching the children mm, to, that was a good one. Uh, good one. not teaching the children to think for themselves. Think for themselves. Become like sheep and want more than they need. And then he said, one of my favorite lines stood out to me. He said, we just become paradise parasites who live inside a petri dish of lies. You sit on a throne of lies. Petri dish is like this little tiny disc that uh, science dish. dish. This little tiny like circular dish looks like a little tiny clear plate where you put like little slides in. And that's when people, uh, scientists study things on like a molecular level, uh, bacteria, um, different types of cell structures and organisms with the microscope and they look inside the Petri dish. We're parasites, you know, we're just leeching off of everything. And we live inside a Petri dish of lies. Inside that thing that we're, we're stuck inside, it's just a bunch of lies all around us. These lies are contributing to this uh, toxic way of thinking that he's referring to. Like 45 Jimmy comes home out of the rain Soaking wet upon a wheelchair Drinking again He is everything he wants He is fortune and fame He's a fortunate fool With an unfortunate fate With a 45 caliber Aimed at his brain 45 a fitting number Cause his age is the same Here's the words of his father It's such a damn shame Money game then he presses on the trigger of a money game. Boom. You know, what's money this? game part three. So everyone says watch Ren's videos to the end, just in case. Well, that's gonna happen in one second, I'll tell you that. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, that was interesting. You know, I like the 45 on 45 line. 45 being the gun, 45 being his age. He kept saying the number 45 over and over again. Uh, just, you know, some song song structure, writing techniques that uh, I, I noticed. Yeah, man. I mean, that was that was that was that was a great way to end it. Just because I believe he's just telling the, uh, an age old tale that, uh, you know, you can have all this money, you can have all this fame, you can have everything you think that you need or want in this world and still not be happy. And look at the Jimmy's 45 with everything he wants, everything he wanted to be. And at the end of it all, he still takes his own life. And you know, that's happened to plenty of rich people. That happens all the time to rich people. You know what I mean? Or famous people. You know, uh, Kurt Cobain. True. Rest in peace. Chester from Lincoln Park. Rest in peace. Word. Uh, was it Robin, did Robin Williams? Yeah. Was? Robin Williams. Rest in peace. You know, yeah. all these people who have all this money but are still not happy for whatever reason, and he just described Jimmy's reasons or Jimmy's reasonings and things that led up to those reasons in this final part of the Money Game trilogy. Visually too, I like how he painted the picture well. You can see the scene happening in your head. Not only could you see it happening, but he created it on the spot. You know, he said Jimmy went outside in the rain and then you saw it started physically raining in, in the video. And you know, he was really worrying me though, cause I mean, I'm sure it wasn't really a loaded gun, right? But you know, he loaded it. It looked like real. It looked real. He, he loaded the, the gun in the video and then just starts like walking around and doing this and that. And I'm like, I'm getting worried. I'm like, I hope he doesn't shoot Sam by an accident. You know, that was kind of worrying me, to be honest with you. I'd be like, if I was the video director or edit the person behind the camera, I'd be like, like, whoa, 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 chill, man. You know what I mean? But uh <laughs> I know what you uh, want. I know what you want. That was crazy. You think he was using an actual real gun for that shot or not? Let us know in the comments, because I thought it was a real gun, man. That was kind of freaking me out. And you know, I called it. I told you he was gonna he was gonna end his life. Or I don't know, I didn't know he was gonna commit suicide, but I knew he was gonna end up dying. I mean, obviously everyone ends up dying, but you know what I mean. 
Well, yeah, man. I liked it. I like this was probably my favorite money games definitely, video. Definitely my favorite. Because uh, he told a story I can follow. Great gave great examples of what happened in that story, mm -hmm. what led up to the individual becoming this person and ending their life. And I just like the details, man. The guy's detailed. I like the details of the story. Great storyteller. And I think people learn a lot through stories, more so than a lot of other yeah. forms. I thought it was good because it contributed to the first two, or well, the first two were necessary for this one to be that much more impactful. Because now you have an idea of where this mindset comes from and where it leads. You know, money game part one, money game part two. Again, the whole concept of the money game from beginning of time till the end and the ideas that are poured into it. Number two was the step-by-step -step process and things that happened. And then number three was just the life of a person who went through it and you saw part one and part two being utilized in this young man's life and where it led up to. So kudos, Ren, kudos. Kudos, Ren, great stuff. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out a lot. Check out our music cause you might like it. Yep. Matter of fact, I know you're gonna like it. So check it out. <laughs> I'm Trace the Hooligan. I'm Jules the Buddha Monk. And we are Straw Hat Dynasty. Dynasty. Your favorite rapping. Breaking. Twins from NYC. NYC. Peace. Peace.